In this video, I'm going to be showing you the massive 2.0 firmware update for the Headrush Looper board. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you've never been here before and you want to learn all about music tech and looping, start now by clicking the subscribe button, hit that bell, and you won't miss anything. So first things first, I was able to get a haircut. Now, moving on. Last year, I went from the Boss RC300 to this. This is the Headrush Looper board. I moved over for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's four loops instead of three. There's lots of different modes as well, including serial mode, sync serial mode, free mode, and loads of different options. Also, this has some built-in effects that are a lot better than the RC300 and for me it was all about the routing and how you routed the loops and also routed your microphone and guitar through to your PA as well as your monitor mix. But one thing Headrush has done is the best thing they could have done which is they have listened. They have been listening to the people who've got these and we've been giving them feedback and information about how we would like it to improve. Because this is a quad-core DSP processor inside, the firmware updates can actually change quite a lot. And what they've done is they've managed to change quite a few things for the better. Today, I'm going to be taking you through some of the big features that are changed over, starting with the user interface. So once you've updated this and put the firmware 2.0 in, you'll see a instant change to the graphic user interface. And this is now how it looks. I'm gonna put up on screen now what it used to look like. If you haven't seen the videos I've done, I did a whole series all about the Headrush Looper board, unboxing it, getting used to it, showing you the inputs, the outputs, the routing, everything. So I'll put a link into the cards right now so you can go back and watch that if you want to. There are about six or seven different videos. So the first thing you'll notice straight away way is that we've got a really really clean interface and top right is where we save our loops and top left is our settings now that's not just the settings for like global settings that's the settings for everything so if I tap on here right now you can now see that it's really easily cleanly laid out you've got the timeline mixer effects function and loop settings and that's for the loop that you're on the patch that you're on underneath that you've got a new loop load loop audio routing backing track and tuner and there for a across the board and then underneath that we've got storage transfer global settings and firmware update so you'll notice straight away a cleaner setup this is the timeline window i'm going to show you a screenshot of what it used to look like from one of my older videos and i'm going to just lay down a couple of loops really quickly just to show you how this works please also note the colors So this one is in sync mode and you can see this is where we've got different bars but they're all in time and as you notice there when we hit record it went red and it used to do that in version one that's fine but then you had this very thin line and now as we hit play <laughs> You can see there's like a faded line uh, that said that you've got the white line and then this faded green bar or red bar or blue bar. So they've used color to represent what you're doing. So if you're green, it's playing. If it's blue, it's stopped. And then if you're in red, it's record or overdub. Now you can see straight away that we've got three layers there and above that you've got bars. So we've got track one, track two, track three. I've not recorded on track four. And then you've got start, stop, which I'll get into in a minute. And then we've got bars and layers. So if you were to set a tempo, which I haven't in this scenario, so it's just stuck it at 120 BPM, but it's not really that. But if I was to set a tempo, it would know how many bars that is and then it would show you the four, eight, six, 12, whatever you've got. Underneath that is layers, which is really useful. So you know how many layers are on each track. The other option is importing a loop as well as actually looping. So if you tap on the little uh, note icon with the plus, it will take you to the library. Now I'm using the audio USB at the moment, so if I tap that, I'd have to stop it. But if you tapped on there, it would take you to the library of loops internal, or if you've got anything plugged in, it will then read the hard drive or SD card and then show you the loops. 
Now, in the version one, what you had to do is you had to hit record and then hit that again and then it would lock it in place and that's fine. And then if you wanted to stop the loop, what you have to do is you have to hit stop or undo. Now that's still the case, but now what they've done is if you hit record again, it used to go straight into record, but if you now hit it, it plays first. And that's really big because if you just want to start a loop, it's really, really useful. You don't have to reach over to the back row to start that loop again. So you can do it this way. <laughs> and do it like that. But then if you change what the start stop does, then this one becomes the start. Yeah. Which is really useful. You can see it's still rolling around there. And if I hit stop, it will stop all of them. But this start stop, what that means is what the top row is doing. So this is start and stop. It's still rolling around, but I can just bring it in or not. So we can change this and we can change what this top row does. So the way I now have this set up is that this top row is my effects. I can go into effects and I'll go into those in a moment. But what I can do is I can change these into different effects. So I can actually say, well, effect one, two, three, four. So I don't have to do a lot of pedal dancing, uh, tap dancing to get actually to my effects and turn them on and off. And then if you want to record, you can just double tap to stop this one at the bottom here instead. So we can go into loop settings. And then once we're in loop settings, there's a couple of different things, but what we're gonna do is customize foot switches. And if we go into there and we basically go on to customize foot switches, this is the top row. So at the moment, it's just start, stop for track one, two, three, and four. And then if I tap here, look at this, you've got start, stop, effects on and off, reverse, uh, two times speed, half speed, two times length, really useful, uh, half length, fade, transpose, peel, undo, redo, clear, or bounce to all. So these top four, buttons can be anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that on to effects on all of these. What that's just done is it's actually just turned all of these top ones into effects. So if I can turn these effects on and off, that's my compressor. You could probably hear my voice dropping. If I turn over to this one, it's going to go to the bass. Hello. And that one's for my guitar. And I've got another one here, which is a little bit more echoey. What this means as well is that I can still play with the looper. So if I go back, I can hit it here. So just a double tap to stop if you want to stop that one. or you can hit stop, start, all. So the first one is the timeline, and we've had the timeline before, but obviously a lot cleaner. And the next one is mixer. Again, they've cleaned it up. It's really, really lovely. Uh, so now we can just tap here and I can start panning. And we've also got the volume and we can use the jog wheel to start using that as well. Everything I'm showing you, by the way, is per loop. So you could set something completely different for the next patch that you've actually loaded. The next one is effects. And as you would have seen there with effects, they have completely changed the UI, which looks beautiful, by the way. Thank you, Head Rush. It looks really lovely. A couple of things I want to say straight away. I always have used this and the RC300 with another pedal. And you would have noticed that in my videos and my performance videos. I've used it with a TC Helicon Voice Live Play Acoustic. The reason for that is because that had harmonies. I could do a bass on here, but I can do a bass on there. But it had vocal harmonies guess what they've added in. So they've now added in vocal harmonies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this one. So my voice is going to go a little bit lower. There we go. So you can hear me a little bit there. If I hit plus, so we now have we had this before we had vocal guitar, lo fi dub, drum and studio. They're the ones we had before. And we've got two new sections. So we've got rhythmic, and we've got vocal tuner. Now rhythmic is something that I actually found in the voice live three, um, which they had like a rhythmic tune. So let's have a look, let's have a look at this. Oh, so it's like a funky wah. And let's have a go through these. I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, why not? Two, three, two, three, ha, ha, three, three, four. <laughs> so. D.
So I'm just going to turn it off for a second. But for the astute of you, you would have realized that that is actually in time with the tempo. Now, this becomes a lot more usable when you're starting a loop. You want to set the tempo for a rhythmic slicer. Really, really useful. Now, the next big one is this vocal stroke tuner. Now, I'm not looking to go all T-Pain or share, but this one actually can do harmonies. Finally, we've got harmonies that are built in to the Headrush Looper board, and this is massive for me. When I'm gigging live, I use a lot of the harmony pedal from the TC Helicon. I might not be using that anymore because this has got harmonies built in. If I go to harmonize and you have a quick look at it, you've got an auto mode and you've also got a scale mode. And again, this is per patch. So what I could do is if I know that one of them is in D, I can just switch it over to D and put the scale in. Or if I want it auto, you can say, well, where's the auto coming from? And you can say, well, it's actually coming from input number two which is my guitar and then it hears the guitar it goes that's a g and it'll harmonize well that's auto so these two now gray out and then you've got voice one and voice two they're both on and it's in stereo and how tight it is and these four little numbers here is just the menu so if we go to two this is voice one and voice two how what kind of pitch they're going to do and the gender and if there's any delay and then you've got the voice pan and eq so a three band eq for each voice and then you've also got the lead vocal which is you and of course how loud the harmonies are comparison to you quick note on the user interface for effects anyway no matter which effect you go for if i go into edit one of these the user interface on the old one i'll put up on a screenshot now it was all on one page you had to figure it out by color and then some stuff used the jog wheels some stuff didn't uh, you had to turn stuff on with your finger and then it was really actually quite messy this is laid out so much better and you've got your preset which target it's coming from, and then you've got all the bits that go with that preset. So we've got height, P, gate, we've got pitch, we've got double or delay, reverb, comp, and EQ. And if I go into doubler, that's the bit for the doubler. If I go into pitch, I can change the pitch. I go into reverb, which kind of reverb is it? So I can just tap and then I can then use that. And then this mix here, I can move with my finger or I can use with the dial. Really, really easy to understand. And you didn't need like 10 15 minutes to figure that out once you've got it the way you want you just hit save effects give it a new name and you've got your custom effects now one thing that you had to do in version one is if you wanted to get dialing into some of the settings you had to then touch the screen if this is on the floor and you're playing a guitar and you want to get into some of the settings there's a function button and the function button will do this and it gives you length, speed, reverse, fade, transpose, peel, bounce, and clear what is written in orange at the bottom here but if you now hold this down what you'll get is you'll get the same system settings that you've got by touching the main screen and you can activate this with your feet. This is brilliant because now I can actually go, what's the mixer doing? Oh, hang on, I'll stop playing and I'll just have to go bend down and touch the screen. No, I can actually go into here and see the mixer running if I need to. I can then hold that down again and then just go back to the timeline, hold that down again and I can go, go to the tuner. Yes, the tuner turns me off because I can mute it. And that's another thing as well. You can now mute the audio coming in when you're playing with the tuner. That's really nice, but I can unmute the microphone. So my input for the guitar is guitar is input number two. And then I can mute two, three, and four. While number one, I can carry on talking to the audience while I'm just retuning my guitar. But I can go straight into loop settings, just straight there. And this is really, really nice. And this takes us to our next piece. So we've got function which is these bits here. And these are the function parts. One nice little addition uh, that was asked for uh, in the, the forums, which is nice. If you haven't been there and you do have a looper board, have a look at the headrushforum.com. It's a really, really nice community where people are feeding back information and headrush are listening. That's the biggest thing. But a nice thing that they did was fade. When you go into fade, it actually fades really quickly, uh, even at 100%. So what they did was they turned it up to 200%. So you you can do 200%. A nice little thing there is the fade length. So if it's a three second uh, loop, for example, and you do 200, it's going to go on for six seconds, but it's just a nice little visual representation. Certainly if you're looking down and go, oh, okay, you can see which one's going down. There's also a fade in. So if you want the fade in, that's part of the V2 as well. I'm not going to go too deep into functions because you could be there all day. But then if we go into loop settings, this is where we can really dial in what the looper is doing. So I went into customize just before, but let's go from the top. We've got tempo and click, and we can actually say whether it's 4-4, whether we've got a click or not. And then of course, you can route that to headphones so it doesn't go out to the PA. The looper mode, whether it's actually synced or serial or serial sync, and that hasn't changed, but it just looks a bit nicer. The track length and quantize. So you can quantize the track length if you want to and say, right, well, this is four bars. 
it's always going to be four bars and then you can quantize per bar so if you've been a little bit out it'll shift it a little bit it's really nice the track start stop now this is nice what we can do is we can actually say well what is it going to do if i hit start stop is it going to stop it right now or is it going to stop it and fade it out or is it going to wait to the end and then stop it? Now, with the start, what they've done is they've done what we've got is either now or aligned. So now is when we start it, it'll start right now, right in the beginning. And that would be a loop while another loop's playing. If you then go to aligned, what that means is that when you get to bar one, beat one, that one will kick in. This is really nice because if you're going to go from like a verse to a chorus, you could tap the button before you hit the chorus, knowing full well that it's kind of armed and it's going to go back and then kick in on beat one bar one we've got one shot and decay so the one shot is really cool so if you've got say for example a song where someone's just going Ooh, and then that's it uh, but there isn't anything else there you don't want it to repeat you just want a one ooh, ooh in there when what you can do is you can say well track four is an ooh, ooh or whatever you've got and you can then hit it knowing full well it's going to play once and then stop feedback decay is something that's available on most loopers and it's something where if you've got 50 vocals and you've got a quite full-blown choir going then it'll be all the same volume you can do a little bit of decay on them so it'll drop down with each one so therefore you don't blow out out the speakers but also it doesn't become a full wall of sound sync audio to tempo is really really cool if you set a tempo then obviously that tempo is then set in stone and you can change that and then if you put time stretch on as well it means it won't change the key if you turn time stretch off and then you change the tempo you could end up sounding like really really low or like chipmunks and customized foot switch obviously we've been over just before really nice thing with customized foot switch as you can see there is you've got reset on new loop what that means is that you can reset them so maybe for patch number five i've got my effects at the top but patch number six i haven't i've got something else i've got uh, bounce and i can bounce stuff over so maybe i've made a load of loops and i just a load of percussion loops and i just want to bounce them onto track one i could do that really easily the next row is new loop load loop audio routing back in track and tuner now we had these before but just a couple of things I want to show you with them. So with new loop, you can literally just go straight in. You can hear straight away my effects have gone. I'm going to bring back what I had. There we go. And I can just do that really, really quickly. Did you see that? So function, loop select, and then they come up there. Now that we had that to begin with, but it's really, really nice interface. So if I go back here, I can load a loop. If I load one there, it's the same thing, but it's now on the touchscreen and i can just pick what i've got so i've got i've just called them fixed 001 serial 001 and sync 001 so i predominantly don't use loads of patches i use a patch that i like i kind of stick to it and then i know whether that loop is going to be serial or it's going to be synced and i use that patch but you could have an entire set list in order with the vocal harmonization and even a backing track which leads me nicely on to here we've got backing track now we had backing track before but this time what they've done the the biggest request with backing track is can we please use the pedals we don't have to bend down to actually start it and now yes you can if you tap here you can load it you've got your level which is set to minus 10 db as standard and then you can use the pedal so how it works is the bottom two here so track two and three of record play overdub are pause or stop and play and if you fan out like that so literally those two is fast forward and rewind and those two are beginning and end so those six become the play buttons for your backing track the bottom row we've got storage so the big thing with version two now is they have got rid of the five minute limit per loop it's now unlimited so if you're doing really experimental stuff and you want to loop forever you can do as much as the hard drive will allow you to and that's another thing of course you can plug in an external and then transfer is where you either transfer information from inside the looper board to out and that's either both a pc a mac or a sd card or a um, hard drive i couldn't think of the word um, and then obviously coming back in as well the next one is global settings and i want to take you through this because there's a couple of nice tweaks which really really change how the looper board works so in global settings we've got a general stuff the lcd brightness um after you do a bounce it'll delete it or you can change it not to record dub you can say one or multi now that's cool if you're a duo so we've got basically a drummer and a saxophonist or we've got a guitarist and a singer time you want to do loop recording at the same time you can do multi you've got fixed mode recording you've got all or solo 
And then foot switch control. This is really cool. I like this a lot. And it tells the looper board what to do when you are looping. So for example, after record, we're going to go straight to overdub, or you can just go to play. I've got mine set to overdub, so I can create loops really quickly and keep it open. After stop, it goes to play. So if you stop something, can you hit it again? It will then play. It won't go straight into record, but you can do so. You can go into overdub mode if you want to. The hold function on each one, you've got peel or what you've got is clear. Let's say you've made a mistake on one loop. You can just hold down now on the bottom one and it'll just peel that last layer away instead of having to go function, uh, peel, uh, find the one and then hit it. So that's four button presses that you can just hold down with one press while you're still recording or you can clear it. So the stop or undos at the top, if you haven't got it set to something else, then the normal functions that you can hold that down, it'll do an undo or you can do clear so completely clear the track and then function on release so what you can do is function it on release or as you press it so some people like to actually hold it down and then let go at in time and that will then affect that for you which is really really cool so you could hold it down for a couple of seconds and as you're playing you could let go so if you're doing an undo redo situation where you've got like a vocal harmony and then you want to let go of that and it'll go straight away or you can do it as a press straight away that's really handy now the start stop all you'll notice here it's got an after stop and that actually isn't available in sync or serial mode so let me just change the mode on this and i can show you the options so now we're in fixed mode so you can see here with fixed or free so after stop what you're going to do you can either pause or return to the beginning and that's for this one right here so if you pause it it'll then carry on if you want to or if you hit it it'll just snap back to the beginning of bar one beat one and then the function on release you can do that as well so you can do that as you let go or you can do it as you press these are really cool. I like these because it really, really uh, hones in on different kind of loop pedals. The audio system, so you've got phantom power that you can throw in or XLR ground lift if you need to. And you can choose when the quarter inch jack is plugged in, whether it's a line level or it's going from an amp. USB audio, I've got enabled. That's how you're hearing me right now. I've just literally got one USB cable, the one it comes with plugged in to the camera so you can hear me. And then we've got the sample rate and then the input level. So I can actually get the sound from the camera back to me and then you'll hear that but you can get doubling. But if you were using USB, you might want to hear the DAW coming back and you've got live mode and DAW. With MIDI, you've got USB and you've got five pin, of course. And this can do loads of things. This can control something else or this can actually run along with something else and something else is controlling it. It doesn't generate where you've got to have this one running the main thing and then everything else has got to follow it. So things like the RC300, it'll only do it one way, whereas this will actually do either, which is really, really good. So when you've got something else plugged in, let's say I've got a MIDI keyboard, like my Artaria uh, Keylab, I could actually program it so each button does something equivalent to pressing the buttons on here. Or if I've got like a drum machine that's actually running a groove, that could run the groove and then this can follow along. The last one is info just to show that we are on version 2 and also the license for the head rush looper board. The last little button is firmware update. You would normally have to go three little dots if you remember that in version 1 at the top right hand corner, go into settings and then go three little dots again and then go in and you'll find firmware update. Whereas now it's kind of laid out really, really easy. Easily. The next question is, what do I think? I've already kind of told you. It is uh, absolutely brilliant. Ap um, to the point where I'm now thinking of finally maybe getting rid of the TC Helicon uh, voice live play acoustic because of the vocal effects that are in here and then I can make my own. One thing I would really like to see in a future update already is to be able to cycle through different effects in order that I've, I've actually picked. With the TC Helicon range what I've done is I've turned around and said I want these effects in this order and I just ch click the next one, turn it on and it comes on. So it'd be quite nice instead of having a one two three four you could just have next 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 or have global effects so i don't have to sign a hall to the guitar which actually takes up one of the spaces and then have just a global effect for the whole gig now i'll still use my expression pedal i have that set to use for volume for the loops so i can use that either for fading out manually if you want to but also i use it to control gig to gig so some gigs are different you want to turn it down a little bit or you need to whack it up before the end to get everyone on the dance floor but overall Version 2, for me, feels like Headrush went, give me your looper board, here's a new one. If anyone is on the fence about a Headrush looper board and you've got an RC300, you've got a Voice Live 3, you've got a Boomerang 3, you've got a load of little pedals all across the top, I totally get that. 
But if you're on the fence about getting one of these, I'm going to push you off that fence and say go and get it. Version 2 is a phenomenal update. I've been playing around with it for a couple of days now, and it's just so solid. There are one or two things that people have already said. Couldn't you do this? Can we have a look at now doing this? And Headrush are listening. Go to headrushforum.com, register, and have a chat with the guys there. They're really, really good with it. They like videos where if the things do go wrong, they want to see it so they can replicate it back at base and then try and fix it. They are really, really friendly and also they are really, really open to suggestion. When they brought this out, they turned around and said, the Headrush Looper Board is going to be the best Looper Board ever. Now, we've heard that before with a couple of other companies, and then they've left it. They've gone, there's the board, bye. This is being firmware updated, and yeah, they've done betas throughout the year, but now with version 2, it is a powerhouse in my opinion i think it's really really phenomenal and again i just want to say thank you very much to headrush to continually supporting loop artists because we're not all the same we some people loop in very different ways so i would like my effects at the top other people go no no i want that button to do something else with a looper, when you get it, you go, okay, that's how it is, and I have to learn it that way. This is interchangeable uh, with MIDI support, with being able to change the function of each button. It's huge for me, and I think it's really, really the future of the way looper paddles should be. If you have found the content of this video useful, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps me and helps the channel grow. If you've got any questions about version 2, hit them my way, and I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. If you want to support the page a little bit further, you can do. You can buy me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. All the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much for those who have already bought me a coffee. You are on the way to supporting this channel and keeping it alive. The video that you're now seeing is not a video, it's the playlist. It's the playlist that I actually put for the Headrush Looper Board and go from episode one where I unboxed it right through to now, which is version two, and then even more in the future. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.